is going to be on the sunflower in a pot. The previous tutorial was just for a daisy type of flower in a pot, but the sunflower has got additional petals to it. Here I have created a sunflower in the large bucket pail or pot with a variegated petal to it. If you cross a sunflower field, you may find some of these out there with the burgundy centers and the yellow tips. Here is my first one I did, the traditional sunflower with the dark center, the brown center, and the yellow petals. And this is in a medium bucket. You can choose if you want to do the medium or the large bucket. And you need to go to that lesson or tutorial and create the bucket first. Today I'm using the large, but as I said, you could use either the medium or the large bucket pail or flower pot tutorial. You have to make one of these before you begin further on with this lesson. And for this lesson, we're going to have our loom set in the offset configuration with our arrows pointing towards our body. We're going to be using about 180 yellow for the petals, the outside of the petals. For the center of the sunflower, we're going to be needing about 40 brown, or you could also use black as I have shown here. And then for the stem, we're going to be needing around 40 in green. So go ahead and gather up your supplies. Something that I'm doing slightly different on the sunflower that I'm demonstrating today, I wanted to open up the center more with more brown because the centers of sunflowers are pretty large, larger than the daisy. So I decided when I make my petals this time, I'm going to be adding additional brown onto my petals. I have already added or already made up a few set of petals and I'm going to do those on camera with you. And then you're going to have to pause and rewind the video and finish up the petals on your own and then come back and join me for the rest of the video. So take a moment, hit the pause button and gather up your items and then we will begin our lesson. Okay, we should be ready to go by now. First thing I want you guys and girls to do is to take a single brown band. We're working on constructing the petals first. Take a single brown band, place it from left to center one, center to right one, and then one band right down the center. These are all single bands. I change up the count of bands throughout this process, so please pay attention and just note when I change the bands around. Next step will be one yellow band coming down the left, one yellow band coming down the center, one yellow band coming across the right. And we're just going to keep this kind of V-shape going all the way down the loom. The next step will be changing to two rubber bands, two rubber bands, and two rubber bands on the right. I'm going to change count on you again, and we're changing to three rubber bands, three rubber bands. and three rubber bands. Next, we're going to change to two rubber bands again. Two rubber bands and two rubber bands. And we're going to cap each one of these off with a three time cap band. For those of you that have problems, please take your um, hook and you want to run it through the center of your band, and I count that as number one. Twist and run it through again as number two. Twist and run it again as number three. You want to make sure that you have three bands looped onto your hook, and then you can stretch it over your bottom peg there, the last peg where the band stops. Once again, we need to cap off each one of these with a three time cap band, one, two, three, and I'm just placing it on the end of my little petal there. One, two, three. 
or you can do the cat band however you feel fit. If three is too tight for you and you want to try two, it's just going to open up the end and not make it look as compact on the end of the petal. I, for this particular design, preferred three. I just thought it looked better. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to repeat this blossom, this set of blossoms, again on our loom down here. And then what you'll have to do is to make sure that you have six sets of these. So this is going to be our set number one. I'm about to lay out set number two. And then you're going to do three, four, five, and six off camera. We're going to begin again, just skipping a peg, and we're going to go from left to center in a diagonal, right to center in a diagonal, and center. All of these are a single brown band. A single yellow coming down the left, a single yellow in the center, a single yellow on the right. Moving up to two bands on the left, two bands on the center, and two bands on the right. Bear with me while I make a little bit of noise. I needed some additional bands. The next step will be three bands. Three bands. And three more bands. Now we're going to switch back to two. 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 And two. And cap each one of these off with a three time cap band. One, two, three. Stretch that out over your peg. One, two, three. Ouch. Stretch that out over your peg. One, two, three. And stretch that out over your peg. So each one of these are capped off with a three time cap band. Now we're going to loom up the set of petals. We don't need to place any horizontals in because that's what's giving it the spread and the true petal look to it. As you can see, I've stored some over here on a skewer. You can also use an extra hook that you have, but when we pull them off the loom, you're going to have a cluster of your brown bands here, and that's going to be the cluster of three. And this is what we need to make sure that we have six total clusters of right there. So let's begin to loom our creation by reaching in and pushing back that three time cap band, grabbing the bottom two bands, and we're going to loop forward once. We're going to reach in, grab our three bands, and loop forward once. Reach in, grab your two bands, loop forward once. Reach in, grab that single band, loop forward once. Reach in, grab that brown band, and reach over to the center diagonal. Then we're just going to start down here at the bottom again with the center, pushing back that cap band, grabbing the three band, I'm sorry, that was two bands. Reach in, grab the three bands. This is just straightforward, very simple looping. Reach in, grab the two bands. Reach in, grab the single band. Reach in, single brown band. And we need to finish the right side. Reaching in, grabbing the two bands, pulling them out of the cat band. Come forward. Three bands. Come forward. Two bands. Come forward. A single band. Forward. And your single brown. Over to the diagonal. And we're ready to take that one off the loom. And I'm just pushing back my additional ones here on my skewer. I'm reaching in with my skewer or your extra hook, and we're just going to take that off the loom. Some places might be a little tight because we did have um, triple bands on there, but that is going to be one section of our petal that we're going to apply to the center of our um, flower once we construct the flower portion. We're going to finish looming this top portion, an extra set, Reaching in on the left side, pushing back that three-time cap band, 
and pulling out those two bands. Forward, grabbing three bands. Loop forward, grabbing the two bands. Loop forward, grabbing the single band. We've reached the brown and we want to come over to the center diagonal. Next we can do the center, reaching in, grabbing the two bands on the bottom, the only bands that are there, three bands, two bands, a single band, and a brown band. Over to this other side, pushing back that cat band, grabbing two bands, grabbing three bands, and I had only grabbed two, so I'm just picking up my third one. Grabbing two bands, grabbing a single band, and we're grabbing our brown band and coming across to the diagonal. I'm going to reach in with my skewer again, and I'm just going to take off this petal creation and store it, straightening up things as I need to if your band's got a little twisted. I like to do my maintenance along the way so I don't have a lot of stuff to do at the end. So here we go. You have already done two sets of petals, but we need to do six sets. So hit pause here and rewind the video and load up your loom with another set of petals and another set of petals and then again with another set of petals and another set of petals and you will have a set of six petals done and then you'll be able to come back here and construct the rest of the flower. So I'll see you guys back in just a little bit. Hey guys, welcome back for part two of the sunflower. Next we're going to be constructing the starburst type. It's not an exact starburst, but it's a starburst style of center. We're going to be adding the stem and then we are going to finish off with our bucket and cap it up and loom it up. I have a little bit of trivia for you. The state that I live in, its state flower is called a Black Eyed Susan, which resembles a sunflower quite a bit. And that is why I decided that my prototype was going to be sort of like a Black Eyed Susan slash sunflower because that is the state flower for Maryland where I live. So that's a little bit of trivia for you. All right, now let's begin our center portion by placing a single band on our center peg dangling over the back half. It's not going to be connected to anything and we're actually going to be using this to slip knot off and tie and secure the rest of our creation together. Next step is to take two brown bands going from left to center two brown bands coming down the left side, just one set of pegs, two brown bands going from left two to center three, and then we're going to start back up here at the top again and go from the center to the right with two bands, right down with two bands, and we're going to close off this diagonal here with two bands. And I had placed three on, so I'm just taking those off, but that's two bands. So that was two bands coming to the left, two bands coming down the left side, two bands coming across to the diagonal, two bands on the right, two bands coming down, two bands on the right at a diagonal. Our next step is going to be to fill in the center of the starburst portion. You're going to take a single band and we're going to start off up here at the top placing it on the center peg and we're going to go up to the top peg then we're going to radiate from the center peg with one band over to right number one and you want to push these guys down some center peg we're going to radiate to right number two center peg we're going to radiate down to center three Center peg, we're going to come over to left two, and center peg up to left one. So we just sort of laid out our bands in a clockwise um, position, clockwise turn, and our next step is going to be to lay out the rest of the stem area. 
For the stem area, we do need to do a couple extra steps. It makes securing your creation a lot easier, a lot sturdier and simpler. So the first step for that, and I'm gonna move my loom out of the way so we can see what's going on slightly. The first step for that is to take a single band, I'm using green, wrap it around your hook three times. Make sure that you see three bands on your hook. And then we're going to take three bands and we're going to pull through that band that we just twisted on our hook. So here we have three bands with the set of three twisted on in the center. And then we're going to lay that on our loom. Right down the center peg. So here we have our starburst set up. And on the center peg, I've laid that three twist band here in the center of three bands. We're going to have to do that all the way down the loom. Makes 10 times. So again, one band, twist around your hook to make it look like there are three on your hook. Pull through three bands. And then just place it on the loom coming down. We're just going to come straight down all the way down the center. Three bands again, or three times around your hook. One, two, three. I'm getting tongue tied. Three bands pulled through. And place on your loom. Again, one, two, three. Three bands pulled through. If I can gather three bands up today. I'm struggling with my counting. Not enough coffee this morning. There we go. Pull through and place on the loom. And I actually did not get all three to pull through that time. So I'm just starting over. And I'm going to place that on my loom. I know this is a little difficult, but trust me, it's a lot easier in the end when we have to sturdy up our stem. So again, one, two, three. Pull through. If I'm going too slow for you, just finish up your piece and then we'll catch up once we have to add the pot. If I'm going too fast, hit the pause button. Two, three. Pull through. One, two, three. And pull through. One, two, three. And pull through. And I only pulled two through that time. Place it on my loom. One, two, three. It's so quiet in here today. I wish I could play some music in the background, but I can't. I'm sorry. Place it on your loom. One, two, three. Pull through three. And place that on our loom. Okay, so here we've got our starburst pattern at the top. Starburst like, it's not exactly a starburst, but it's a starburst similarity. And then our three twist bands in the center of our three bands all the way down to the bottom of our loom. Next step, at the bottom of our loom, we're going to take and apply our pot right here on this peg. If you guys see from my example, these are the, the stems at the bottom that we're going to loop through. So our pot is actually becoming our cap band. Turn your pot that you've made inside out. 
If it looks like you've got any bands that have unraveled around here, you want to quickly grab one of your band colors and tie them together. If you didn't grab the bottom bands when you looped this whole bucket together, it could start to fray apart. You may have thought that you gathered the bottom bands, but in some instances um, they get twisted and you did not. I did have a bucket unravel on me because I missed grabbed the bands, but it was a quick fix because I just tied it together real quick. So we want to take our bucket and you just want to separate out and you want to get to that center band. What we used when we did the bucket um, kind of made the fish eye look. That's the bands that you want to get, like the center of what was the starburst on the bucket. So you want to grab two bands from one side and two bands from the other side of the bucket. And then we're going to stretch, stretch this across and place it on our loom as the cap band. So here we've got it just stretched across on the loom as our cap band. The other thing that we need to do is to add our petals in here. The petals are going to go on peg number one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The pegs or petals are going on peg number seven. I am just marking mine with a toothpick. If you've got your extra toothpick right there beside you, go ahead and do that also. And then we're going to move on to making the petals. The petals are going to be a single band wrapped around your hook three times. One, two, three. You're going to pull through two bands and reclaim back on your hook. Our next step is to pull two bands through, but we're only going to do it on the first set. So we're going to just slide over the first two bands and then reclaim on our hook. So you have something that looks similar to this. And then we're going to take a single band and run that all the way through and reclaim that on our hook. So here we have just made our little petal and I'm going to place it on that loom where I have that toothpick securing my number seven center peg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number seven center peg gets my petal and I need to make a petal for the other side. So it's going to be a three twist on your hook three band twist on your hook, two bands pulled through, and reclaim those two bands. We're going to take two additional bands and only slide over just one portion and reclaim those two bands. And then we're going to take a single band and pull all the way through and reclaim. And then that is going to go on the opposite side on peg number seven. And that's our cute little leaves for our sunflower. So now we are ready to lay the top portion which is going to get a little hectic and crazy because there's going to be so much going on with these additional bands. Before we do that, take and push down your starburst area here. And you want to take and you want to cap off the center of your flower. And that should be a four time cap band. I know most of you guys don't like to do it at four, but it just makes the center really tight. So take your single band and wrap it around your hook so that you have four bands showing up on your hook. What looks like four bands. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to stretch that out over that center band. And I struggle with the four. I'm not going to lie. I struggle with doing four this way because I normally find it easier to wrap it around the hook or wrap it around the loom. So there's my number one. Here's my number two. There's my number three, and here's my number four. 
and I'm just twisting and turning it around that peg. You guys need to do your cat bands whichever way you feel comfortable. So now that we have our cat band on there, we're going to add our petals. And our petals are going to go on each one of these six pegs. So you want to grab your petal set. And we're going to stretch it across every peg that we have here. I'm grabbing my next set of petals, my next set of three petals, and I'm going to stretch that across another peg, my next set of three petals, and I'm going to stretch that across. I want to make sure that you get all of those bands that are down there. There's a lot of them. And this looming portion up here is going to be pretty tough. I will go slow. I will do my best to explain everything well. Next set of three petals on our loom. And I have to turn my loom slightly because I'm having a hard time reaching that other side. And next set of three petals stretched out on our loom and then the center Ooh, you guys are not going to like that one stretch out your three bands especially when we go to loop oops you know what we don't need to add that one yet we can't add that one yet because we need to loop the stem so just set this aside sorry about that see i make mistakes too we can't loop that until after we have um looped up the the stem so Go ahead and place your bands on the other five, and we're going to add number six in just a minute. So let's move on back down here to the bottom of our loom, and we're going to loop our stem up till we get to the brown. So you're going to push back your bucket color, push back everything there at the bucket, grabbing the bottom three bands and coming straight forward. This is very simple, easy looping, pushing back the bands, grabbing the bottom three, and I had only grabbed two then, but you want to grab your bottom three bands in each one of these and just loop straight forward. I'm just grabbing the bottom three bands. Now I've reached the leaf area, and this is going to be a tight and congested one. So you may want to just stretch out your petals a little bit, your leaves, and we're going to push back those leaf bands, and we're reaching in beyond that leaf if I can get that out of the way and it's not going to stay out of the way but you want to grab the bottom three bands pushing back everything else and grabbing the bottom three and looping forward I'm just making sure I had three there bottom three bands loop forward bottom three bands loop forward bottom three bands and loop forward and now we have completed our stem, and now we need to add our petals. That last set of petals, and we're going to add that right there. And I wanna let you guys know that there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot on that peg. You are not gonna like working within this peg. I'm gonna warn you now, and I'm gonna go really slow when I get to it. So our next step is to finish off the top of our sunflower. We're going to reach into our center band, pushing back that cat band, and we're going to grab our top band there, as a starburst you would, and it's going to come over to left one. Now we're working counterclockwise, reaching and grabbing that top band, and it's going to come down to left two. Pushing back that cat band, Grabbing that band, coming down to the center, and looping it on that very full center peg there, which is center number three. Push back your cat band again, grabbing your next band that you come to on the top, and that's going over to right number two. Reaching in, grabbing that next band on top, and that's right number one. And reaching in, grabbing that band, the only one left in there and coming straight up to the top. Now we are ready to finish off our sunflower. 
here comes the part that you're not going to like. We need to reach in through all of this mess here on peg number center three. You're pushing back everything that you see down there, and it's going to be really hard for me to show you on camera, but you want to grab these two bands here on the right. You want to grab those two bands right there. So we're pushing back everything until we get to those two bands, and I'm going to loop those two bands, wiggling them out slightly. You want to wiggle it out around. Be sure to relieve some tension as you wiggle out and come over to your right. In order to relieve some more tension, just take your hook and run it around that peg and that will help relieve some tension on that set of rubber bands. Our next step is going to be to reach in on the right side again and we're pushing back everything that's there and we want those bottom two brown bands, the bottom two and we're just going to loop forward. Our next peg we're going to do the same thing. Push back everything with your hook, grabbing the bottom two bands, wiggling them out, and placing it on our center peg. We're just finishing up that diagonal on the right side. Now we need to finish up our left side, reaching back into this very congested, busy band down there, pushing back the browns, the yellows, and even the greens from the stem and we're grabbing the bottom two bands. And we're going to wiggle those out, and I had picked up three somehow, so I have an extra one somewhere along the way down there. And I just need to get them straight and rework them out. Okay, pushing back everything. And here I have grabbed my two bands. And I'm wiggling over to the left. Now I know that's pretty tough for you. So just take a moment and make sure that you're finding those correct bands. Once you get your correct bands, we're going to just continue to do the same thing. Pushing back all those brown bands and that yellow and whatever else is in there. And we're getting the bottom two bands. Bottom two brown coming forward once. Another messy spot, pushing back everything, grabbing the bottom two bands, and we're coming over to the center. And this should complete our sunflower. The only thing we have left to do is to tie it off by using our dangle band. Pull your petals over to the right, reach in through all that top mess, and you're gonna grab that bottom dangle band and you're going to pull it up through the center of your top peg. Wiggle it out. You want to wiggle it out and around to relieve some tension. Take the back of your dangle band and secure it on your hook and then slip knot this product off. Slip knot it off right there to the left side. Now we're ready to take it off. Cross our fingers that we didn't miss any loops and it doesn't fall apart on us. I use the back of my hook or you can use your skewer just because there's so much tension on this entire daisy head or sunflower head. And then as we come down the loom, I still like to use my hook because it doesn't twist the bands up as bad. I'm working all the way down here to the bottom, reach the pot, and I'm going to worry about straightening up the top of the sunflower in just a minute. The next step I want you guys to do is to place the toothpick in. If you don't have a toothpick and you want to use wire, you can do that too. But we're going to be running the toothpick down the set of three bands on the back. So just slide your toothpick in, picking up those three bands. And this is what I was talking about. It makes it so much easier to run your um, toothpick or your supporting beam through. So we're just going to run it all the way through to the end of the green, stretching it out slightly. You can also take and poke that toothpick back in the head of the sunflower. It'll give it more support. And our bucket is inside out still. So we just need to take and we need to turn our bucket the correct way. 
And here we have got our gorgeous crazy sunflower. And depending upon how um, tight your bands are, I didn't use the best brown bands here. They're lower quality. Depending upon the tightness of your bands will depend upon how floppy your flower is. But here we have got our sunflower. Here we've got the sunflower done with the variegated and the darker center. If you're having problems getting your bucket to stand up, as this one is, I found a great kind of <laughs> trick. How many of us have extra C-clips around or S-clips or any type of clips? You can take a bag of clips, open up your bag of clips, and dump it in your bucket. Dump these clips into your bucket. I normally throw them away because I have so many of them, but if you just place a bag of clips in the front of your bucket, and you place an extra bag of clips in the back of your bucket, it gives your bucket a little bit more support and will allow it to stand better on its own. You don't like seeing the C-clips, the clear C-clips through the top there. I have another little trick for you because you can still see the C-clips. Just simply take some of your green rubber bands and push them down in there with your C-clips and that will just sort of cover up the clearness of those clips. Just randomly tuck some in. And it also makes it look kind of weedy and leafy and grassy when you do that. But now our bucket will be able to stand and with a little bit of fiddling, and it's very hard to get the angle here, but with a little bit of fiddling and figuring things out there, getting your bucket to stand will be pretty easy. Here, I just got it. Um, but here we have our sunflower. Please post your creations on my Facebook page, Crafty Ladybug Dash Rainbow Loom Creations, or my website is craftyladybugcreations.com. And also, I have Instagram. You can tag me there at Crafty Ladybug. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this sunflower, and I look forward to seeing your pictures and posts of them. Thanks so much, and I'll be seeing you soon.